All right, uh, so today what I'm going to show you is Affinity Photo. If you've never seen it before or used it, it's very similar to Photoshop. It's actually much better. Uh, it's on your desktop on the left-hand side. looks like a little purple triangle. If you open it up the first time, it typically will open whatever you were last working on. Obviously, I was uh, kind of playing around with this beforehand. So I'm going to essentially show you how to create this as part of our alphabet photography tutorial. Uh, obviously, like I've done all the hard work for you, figuring out the math and the grid, and uh, I'll show you how to get to this in the next few minutes here. So just for now, I'm going to just close that out. Uh, when you open up Affinity Photo for the first time, you get like a pop-up screen. Uh, on the pop-up screen, it might say New Document. You can just click New Document, that would be fine. Or uh, you can always go File, New, or you can see there Control N is a shortcut for a new document. Um, it might not say photo at the top, it might say web, but this is really important to make sure this is correct. And I just want to jump on my blog here, just so you can see that I'm following the instructions right on my blog. So uh, for our class, always just go to your class. Alphabet photography should be up at the top. There was all the instructions. All I'm going to do is go through these steps. And in the steps, I show you really clearly what to click what to put in here. Uh, if you want to make one of these bigger, I usually right click on it, open it in a new tab, and that way you can see that a little bit bigger. You can hit control plus if you want to make it even bigger. So we know that the dimensions of this page have to be 8 by 21 with a 72 resolution. And there's really just two parts to making that document. So the first part, if we look at it in greater detail, uh, it says, oh, let me zoom out. File new, we want it to say print custom inches. So I'm gonna go do that right now. So it says web right now for the type. I'm gonna click that, print, page presets. Uh, different printing usually has different size paper. Uh, for our purposes though, we're not using a standard piece of paper. So we're gonna go custom, which is right at the top. And very important to use document units of millimeter, or sorry, inches. Uh, it might be sent to millimeters right off the bat, but you want to make it say inches, okay? So that section's done. Now we need to make the document size. The dimension is right down here. So the page width, I've already done the math for you, and it's eight inches wide by 21 inches tall. The resolution here uh, is 300, because whenever you want to print something, you want it to be really nice, crisp, and clear. So 300 is a good resolution for that. It's the best resolution for printing, but we don't need to, it to be that resolution, because with the greater resolution, the greater size, uh, the more space it takes up. So we want to make sure we have it said, uh, written down as 72, okay? So 8, 21, 72, if you hit okay, it should look like this. If for some odd reason it doesn't look like this, you can always go to document, uh, resize document. And sometimes, like if I change one number, it'll change the other number. You just have to click on this little lock and then you can change them independently. So let's say I accidentally hit like 20. It would, uh, I wouldn't be able to change it if it was locked. I'd have to unlock it and hit eight by 21. DPI, you can change right there. Uh, if you forgot to put it in millimeters or inches, you can change that from there. Okay, just hit cancel. Another thing, you might not have rulers, right? The rulers are on the edges and it makes things really handy, especially to double check your work. So control R is a really good, it's a shortcut to get your rulers. You can also go view uh, and rulers should be some right here, control R. Uh, I really like that it shows you these shortcuts. Try to get using shortcuts as much as possible. It's like uh, everybody knows Control S, Control V, right? To say or copy and paste, uh, and or C and V uh, to copy and paste. Uh, same thing with these. You'll start to learn all these little shortcuts, and it'll make your life so much easier if you start to learn it. Uh, if I go back to the tutorial. I will see, we've already done steps one and two, now we're doing step three. So we're gonna add a grid. So what we do is go up to the top, view, guides, manager, and we're gonna add some lines in here. Here's all the numbers we have to add. Uh, again, you can always click on, open that in a new tab, and that shows you really clearly what you need to do. 
Okay. There's also this little button right here. It looks like a folded over piece of paper. That's how we add new um, new sections to that grid. Okay. So I'm just going to do that for you now. I'm going to go to View Guides Manager. Then there's nothing in it right away. So to add something, I need to put this little folded over piece of paper and I can add a few there. It automatically goes to the middle of the page, which is 10.5. But I know every one of my little squares, every one of my images is going to be two inches wide by three inches tall. So I have to put horizontal guides every three inches. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, and then 18. Okay, and if you look at your page, it should be evenly spaced. If one of these is off, let's say, let's say I accidentally put in 14, you could see right away that something is wonky, something isn't right. So then I would go back in here and double check. Three, six, nine, 12, 14, oh, 14, no, that's wrong. And I would just change that to 15. There we go, so that looks perfect. Now to add my vertical lines, I know I have three of them, so I'll hit that three times. Change that to two inches. Four inches is already in the middle, that's one of our lines, so I'll just change that last one to six. Perfect. And everything looks awesome right there. That looks exactly how you want it to look. I'm gonna hit close to get rid of that. Um, what else? Uh, on the right-hand side, you're gonna see the adjustments and then layers. For this assignment, this layers tab right here is going to be extremely important. So this is our grid, but we need to start filling our grid. And I'll show you uh, the other one just so you can kind of get a sense of what it should look like. This is kind of what your placeholder will look like so you know where to put your pictures, okay? So in order for us to get these uh, letters written in there, uh, you need to make a new layer. So there's two ways you can do that. Again, that little like folded over piece of paper, there's one over here when you click on the layers tab and I'm just gonna click on that and it's going to say new pixel layer. So this is one of those little differences between Photoshop and Affinity. Um, in Photoshop, it was just like file or layer new layer. This is called like file or layer add pixel layer. The other thing you could do is go up here to layer and then just new layer as well. And there's another shortcut, control shift N. I usually don't like to like really spend my time memorizing any shortcut that has like more than two things. So as long as I know where to find it really easily, I know I can do that. Another really important thing for this assignment is to name your layers. To name my layer, I'm just going to click where it says pixel and I'm just gonna type in alphabet um, placeholders. Perfect, and hit enter. There we go. This was another thing I love uh, as an improvement over Photoshop. If you clicked on a Photoshop layer once, it never allowed you just to change the name like this. Um, so I really like how easy it is to change the names here, okay? Uh, so now I have my alphabet placeholder layer. Uh, once we start learning a little bit more about layers and what they do, you'll realize how important they are. But just kind of remember, the layers are kind of like um, different elements of this this uh, final image. Like imagine this is like a poster board and so on the poster board we basically just drew out our grid with a ruler and now after we put the placeholders it's like we're just writing down on paper like on the uh, poster board uh, what we're going to do. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is actually write down all these letters just like this. And again, it's not, it doesn't need to be pretty. That's not the point. The point is for you to know where those letters go. If I told you like, we're gonna import our T and you've tried to put your T in there, you might have no clue where that T goes. Uh, but if there's a, a T written down, you'd know very quickly where it goes. So it's about efficiency. Um, so we have to paint in with the paintbrush. The paintbrush is right here and there's actually a shortcut. If you hit the letter B, it will automatically get it for you. Uh, as you can see, if I had it selected, if ever you see like a little triangle on one of these, it means there are other things hidden underneath it. So there's a color replacement brush, a pixel tool. We wanna to make sure it's on the brush tool, okay? There, this one up here looks like a brush, 
but it has like a little circle that's checkered. Uh, there's another one down here that has like a, it's a paint mixing brush. So you have to really be very careful to make sure you get the right brush. If you're not sure, let your mouse hover over it and it will tell you exactly what brush it is. So right now I'm hovering over this one, paintbrush tool, perfect. Uh, you can change the size of a couple different things. So uh, I'm going to actually change the pixel width so that it's not like super fat like this. Oh, sorry. Um, I can change that up here. I can do the slide wheel. One thing I like is I like the live preview. So if I want, I can make this bigger or smaller depending on what I'm doing. I need it to be quite small so I can actually write out my letters. Uh, I wrote on the tutorial to set this to 10. 10 pixels is good. And then what I wanna do is just like really quickly write out my letters. Much easier to do this with a tablet. We have tablets, uh, but we're not gonna be using them just yet. So basically you keep writing out the alphabet until you arrive to something like this. Uh, you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner, we have an open space. That is on purpose. Uh, if you think about the letters of the alphabet, we could have like changed this in, in various different ways, but I really like how it looks after this. And even though it has a, an opening in that bottom right hand corner, it means uh, that we actually have an opportunity to put an image there. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a new document that's this exact size, and we're gonna be bringing in some layers and making a word, and then that really finishes off the picture nicely. So that'll be kind of like step three in this process. So step one is taking pictures. Step two is making the grid and filling it up, and then step three is finishing it. So now that you, sh you should have a, a grid with layers in it like this, I'll show you two different ways to bring in images and to make them work really well. The first one I believe is probably the probably the best way, the most efficient. Um, another really important point is you wanna make sure that this little uh, magnet up here is clicked. It should be dark gray, not light gray. And the reason for that is it's, it's a snapping tool, which basically means that when we bring in our images, it will snap to that grid, which is really, really helpful to make sure your final image looks correct. So when you have images, what I would do is I would just go file open, find wherever you saved them. And let's say, let's say this one is my B. I'll open that up. Okay, it opens up the correct way. So that's perfect. Uh, but obviously if I look at the size using my rulers, it's huge. So what I wanna do is make it the proper size to fit in that other document. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to document, resize document, and then it says pixels. We always wanna think like, this is kinda of one of those math related things. We wanna work in the common denominator, which is inches. So right off the bat, I'm gonna put it in inches. You can see here it's 55.556 by 83. That's like roughly the size of a whiteboard. It's huge. Um, just means that the picture we took is super high quality. What we're going to do is actually, we're gonna just reduce the size. The width is actually two inches. And if I click, the other one automatically turned to three. And that's because of this lock. If it didn't turn to three, I could, like, I could fudge the number a little bit by unlocking it. If it said like 3.111 or something, I could unlock this and manually change it to three. But you want your picture to be two inches wide, three inches tall, the units of inches. DPI, again, if you don't have the same denominator as your other document, it won't work. So the lowest common denominator we're using is 72. And I'm just gonna hit resize. And it's going to go like a little bit pixely. It's gonna lo lose a little quality, which is fine because it's going to be a thumbnail essentially. Okay, now that I have this one here, I can, you can see all my different layers at the top. I'm just going to close this one and just not save it. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna drag it off. If, if I drag it off, it's going to pull off here. There's a couple different ways. Uh, if I want, I could go back to this. I could rename it B, if that's my letter B. I could 
right click on it and copy it. Go back to my other document, right click on that and I could hit paste. And then my B goes in the top right hand corner, that's perfect, obviously not in the right place. So I have a new layer here and using this move tool and the move tool is letter V. When I select letter V and I have the correct layer selected, I can move it. And the cool thing about that snapping, that little magnet, you can see I have a couple different lines turned on now. Like when I'm in the right spot, the green lines vertically mean it's lined up to both edges. The red line shows that it's lined up on both other lines. So again, let's say that was letter J. I would just move my image right there and it would be perfectly centered as long as I have the red lines and the green lines, I'm happy, okay? So that's perfect. I'll show you another way to import letters. It's a little bit more cumbersome, not as clean. If you do it this way, you're more so guaranteed your, your, your image will be more accurate, I would say. So the other way, it's kind of a little bit sloppy. Let's use my T here. Uh, it's kind of just drag and drop. Okay, and if I make this large again, you can see if I grab my selection tool, I would go to my layer. I would change that layer to T first. Okay, and if I hit control minus a few times, you can see it brings it in as, a, as that original size and it's so huge. So what I wanna do is I wanna make it a little bit smaller first so I can at least work with it. And I'm gonna hit control plus a few times. And again, it's sideways, so it didn't bring it in the correct way because I had to take that picture um, differently. Now what I could do is I could rotate it, but as you rotate it, you can see there's a little, um, a little it says R, and it'll tell you that angle. We want that angle to be at 90 degrees. Um, and you can see it's kind of hard to get it exactly to 90, but if I hold Shift, on the keyboard, it locks it to common angles. Okay, you can see there, it uh, it's not as free, it kind of snaps a little bit more. So it's much easier to get that at a 90 degree angle. There it is, so that my T is in the right place, but again, it's too big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag it over here to where my T should go. I'm gonna get it lined up at that top left hand corner. I know it's lined up because I have a red line and a green line. And then I'm gonna go down here to this one, click and drag it until I get another red and green line. So that now is in the right place. The layer is in the right spot. That worked. You can do it that way. Both are correct. But this one, the way I did it before with opening the other document, resizing it, copying and pasting it, that is more accurate than dragging this in and resizing it the way I did. Because there's always a possibility that maybe your angle was off a little bit. Um, and when we go to print these, if your document isn't perfect, you'll see white lines in between it. You'll see some of these are, it could be a little bit crooked. So you wanna make sure that is all done correctly. So that really is all of the steps that I have listed on my blog that we've just done, actually a lot extra. I kind of stopped before I imported. I'm gonna add those in later. So this recording that I just did, I will upload to uh, the blog as well. So if you wanna review it at any other time, you can do that.